Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue à la semaine 5. Welcome to week 5. So uh, a few pieces of advice to deal with uh, chapter 2, uh, the first part of chapter 2 in week 5 here in Français Interactif in your course, French, French 1411. So uh, first of all, before we start, it, start, isn't that a pretty picture? So uh, that's a lavender field in the south of France. So um, there's just beautiful rolling hills all over the south of France in Provence where you can see lavender fields as far as your eye can see. So just imagine yourself there instead of being a student at Lone Star College sci Fair, and that'll transport you to somewhere really cool. So back to reality, here we go. So um, uh, we're going to talk about some things in uh, uh, chapter two. First of all, the verb avoir. The verb avoir is an irregular verb, right? So remember that with irregular verbs, there's really no system for conjugating them. You just have to memorize all the forms of the verb, right? And careful with the pronunciation of the verb. So here are all the forms uh, pronounced in French for you. J'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, on a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Notice that I'm doing liaison with a lot of those, right? So especially with the plurals, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. I'm making a Z sound um, with those final S's that normally are not pronounced. By itself, it's just nous. By itself, it's just vous. By itself, it's just il. By itself, it's just elle. But because the next word starts with a vowel, you're making that z sound, and that gives you nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont. Okay, so be careful with that. Also, be careful with the difference between they are and they have, right? Ils sont and ils ont, right? Ils sont, ils ont. The first one, ils sont, is être, they are. The next one is avoir, ils ont, they have. So with être, it makes an S sound. Sont, you are pronouncing the S at the beginning of the verb. And with avoir, you're just doing liaison, and that's what gives you the Z sound uh, uh, before you go into the verb, ils ont, right? Same thing with the feminine, elles ont, elles sont. Right? Careful. And there's also lots of expressions with avoir uh, as well. So uh, uh, expressions with avoir that are idiomatic expressions, that is to say expressions that are peculiar to French that don't translate literally from one language to another. Here's one, avoir faim. The expression avoir faim uh, means to be hungry. If we had to translate that literally into uh, English, to have hunger, that sounds weird to us, but they use the verb to have. In French, we use the verb to have, uh, whereas in English, uh, uh, you use the verb to be in a lot of these expressions, so be careful with those. There's a really nice list of those expressions with avoir at this page over here. So I'm going to go ahead and take you there and show you this page. So let me get that open for you. So with it, you've got these expressions over here. So uh, avoir chaud means to be hot. J'ai chaud. The opposite is to be cold. J'ai froid, right? So literally, I have cold. Be careful. J'ai faim, I'm hungry. J'ai soif, I'm thirsty. J'ai onze ans, to be a certain number of years old is avoir, and then a number, and then on. J'ai onze ans, I'm 11 years old. Literally, I have 11 years. J'ai peur, I'm afraid. J'ai mal aux dents. Avoir mal à is to hurt somewhere, right? So uh, avoir mal à, in this case, j'ai mal aux dents, my teeth hurt. J'ai besoin d'aide, avoir besoin de is to need. J'ai tort, avoir tort means to be wrong. J'ai raison, avoir raison is to be right. J'ai de la chance, uh, avoir de la chance is to be lucky. J'ai envie de voyager, I want to travel. So here's some more over here. So j'ai 80 ans, for example. Nous avons de la chance, for example. Tu as chaud, elles ont froid, ils ont froid. Il a faim. Le pauvre chien, il veut manger. Il a soif. Vous avez tort. Nous avons raison. Ils ont peur. Il a honte. Il a honte. Avoir honte is to be ashamed. Right? So careful with those. Uh, il a sommeil. Il a sommeil. Avoir sommeil is to be sleepy. Avoir mal à. Il a mal à. For example. Elle a mal à la gorge. Her throat hurts. Vous avez envie de manger. Vous avez envie de manger. Avoir envie de is to want, right? So uh, uh, you usually use a verb uh, after it. So uh, il a une question. On a une idée. To have a question. To have an idea. And you use avoir in the expression il y a. There is. There are. Right. So careful with those expressions with avoir. So those are they. And um, here's an exercise that you can try 
um, uh, for practicing your expressions with avoir. If you go to that link, it'll take you to this page right here. So you have to decide uh, um, what's going on here with an expression with avoir, all right? So, for example, Ludovic gagne à la loterie. So he wins the lottery. So il a, il a la chance or il a raison. Is he lucky or is he right? Huh? You have to choose the right one. Il a la chance in that case, yeah? So uh, then keeping uh, 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 on with our chapter, then you also have the verbal ER, regular ER verbs. So this is your first group of regular verbs uh, in French. So regular ER verbs. Fortunately, most of the verbs in French are ER verbs, and those are the ones that you get in this chapter. Those are the endings. You memorize these endings, super easy. E, E, S, E, O, N, S, E, Z, E, N, T. You memorize those, you can cook. That's the recipe. You can cook all the verbs uh, that end in ER. Most of the verbs in French end in ER. So memorize those endings. And careful with pronunciation, especially with the third person in plural. Yes, it ends in E-N-T, E-N-T, but it's not pronounced, so don't pronounce E-N-T in French, right? So if you want to say, for example, they speak, they do speak, they are speaking, yeah, it's spelled P-A-R-L-E-N-T, but it's il parle, il parle, they are dancing, il danse, they are listening, ils écoutent, okay? Um, you might want to write one out and say them as well. So pick a verb that starts with a consonant like parler or travailler or danser, one of those infinitive forms, and write out all the forms and say them. You might want to do the same for a verb that starts with a vowel as well, like écouter or habiter or étudier. Uh, uh, pick one of those, write them out, say them, uh, uh, so you can figure out uh, what to do with all those different verbs. Here's an exercise that you can try with verbs, uh, uh, ER verbs, right? So it's a nice little conversation between Denis and Paul, and you've got lots of possibilities there. Aimer, chercher, commencer, détester, écouter, étudier, habiter, manger, parler, and regarder. Careful with commencer, you might need to look that one up. Careful with manger, you might need to look that one up. In the new form of commencer, there's something special. In the new form of manger, there's something special. So just look up your verbs in the verb charts in Francais Attractif's website, and you'll see uh, what the special thing is. I'll let you discover what that is on your own. There's also, um, in this week, possessive adjectives. There's adjective possessive. They're adjectives, right? So they have to agree. Adjectives agree in number and in gender in French, right? So make sure that your adjective agrees with the noun that you're using, okay? Careful, especially with the third person uh, forms of these. Sans sassi and leur, leur, leur. The singular, sans sassi and leur, leur, leur. All three of those, sans sassi, mean his, her, or its. Sans means his, her, or its. Sa means his, her, or its. Si means his, her, or its. Leur means their. Le means there, and le means there, right? The one you use depends on what kind of noun you have, right? So if you have a masculine singular noun, you need son. If you have a feminine singular noun, you need sa. If you have a plural noun, you need si, etc. That's how adjectives work. So how would you say her computer? Comment dit on her computer? Think of the word for computer. Ordinateur, right? So uh, what's the gender of the word computer, ordinateur? Words that end in E-U-R are masculine words. So that means we need a masculine word for her. Son. Son ordinateur. How would you say his aunt? Comment dit on his aunt? What's the word for aunt? Tante. Tante. What's the gender of aunt? What's the gender of tante? Feminine. And are we singular or plural? Singular. So we need a feminine... Sing I'm sorry. Yeah. A feminine singular word for his. A feminine singular word for his. Sa. Sa tante. And how would you say his friend, his friend, who happens to be a woman? So what's the word for a friend who's a girl? Ami, ami. How do you spell ami? A-M-I-E, right? What's the gender of ami? Feminine. And so how would you say his friend? So what do you mean? Son ami, son ami. You were probably thinking sa, right? Well... You don't use sa in this case. Why? Because ami starts with a vowel. So sa is also used with feminine singular nouns that start with a vowel. Right? Comment dit on their friend? How do you say their friend? Leur ami. Leur ami. Leur ami. Right? And how would you say their friends? Plural. Leurs amis. Leurs amis. So leur with an S and ami with an S. 
Here's an exercise that you could try uh, with uh, the possessives right here. So this takes you to another conversation between Jean and Mathieu and Luc, right? So, and you have to choose the right pronoun uh, uh, to go, the adjective uh, to go in the blank right there, okay? So try that exercise and that'll fix you up. And la famille is also this week. So careful with the pronunciation of some of these words, like the word for son in French, all right? Uh, normally you do not pronounce final consonants in French, and the word for son is an exception. It's le fils, fils. The L is silent, but the S is pronounced. Fils, 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 le fils. And la fille, la fille, the word for daughter, that's you, 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 you sound like yellow. Le fils and la fille, la fille. And there's also compound nouns uh, uh, that happen with those, like beau fils, belle fille. And careful with plurals as well. So how would you make the plurals of all these things? Le petit-fils is the French word for grandsons. So how would you say grandsons? Les petits-fils. And you'd have to put an S on petit, right? Fils doesn't need an S because it already is an S. How would you say granddaughters? That's la petite fille, granddaughter. But how would you say granddaughters? Les petites filles. Les petites filles. Petite with an S and fille with an S. Le grand-père is the word for grandfather. How would you say grandfathers? Les grands-pères. Les grands-pères. So grand with an S and père with an S. La grand-mère is the word for grandmother. How would you say grandmothers? Les grands-mères. Les grands-mères. Grand with an S and mère with an S. Le beau-père is the word for father-in-law. How would you say fathers-in-law? Les beaux-pères. Les beaux-pères. Beau, not with an S, with an X. And pa with an S, right? E-A-U words and an X in the plural. And la belle mère is mother-in-law. How would you say mothers-in-law? Les belles mères. That's mère. That's a typo. Sorry, that should be an R over here. So, belle mère. Uh, les belles mères. Belle with an S and mère with an S. Comme on dit, it's his sister. C'est sa soeur. C'est sa soeur. Comme on dit, those are his parents. Ce sont ses parents. Ce sont ses parents. Comme dit-on, the great-grandparents, there you go. It's les arrière-grands-parents. Maybe you didn't find that word in the book, but I'm giving it to you here. Great-grandparents, les arrière-grands-parents. Here's a nice grammar presentation right here that you can use that has some really good exercises with it as well. So you go to this website and check it out. Ma grand-mère. And you can learn about all the uh, uh, family members there. And if you go back to the index, there's an exercise with each one. For example, here, here's Romain. You're working from Romain, and you have to click on Romain's father, right? So click on Piquet sur mon père. Click on my father. There you go. All right? So that's how you do that exercise. All right? So try that one out. And a few other tips uh, uh, for the chapter include contractions with de, all right? So uh, uh, these are contractions with de right here. So when de comes in contact with le, the article le, they go away and they turn into a new word and the new word is du, du, du. When de comes in contact with la, there's no change, just de la stays the same. When de comes in contact with et apostrophe, it's just de et apostrophe, it doesn't change, right? Uh, when de comes in contact with le, it does change, they go away, they turn into a new word, and it's de, right? So the only ones you have to worry about are the masculine singular, du, and the plural, de, all right? Um, uh, de is one way to show ownership uh, in French, la possession. Possession as in owning something, not as in you have a devil in you. Okay, So uh, in English, we use apostrophe S in these contexts a lot, uh, but not in French. There's no such thing as apostrophe S uh, for ownership in French, right? So in English, we say things like the mother's daughter, but in French, you'd have to say the daughter of the mother, right? So la fille de la mère, la fille de la mère. The son's father, for example, if you wanted to say that, you'd have to say the father of the son. Le père du fils. Le père du fils. The wife's sister. In French, you'd have to say the sister of the wife. La sœur de la femme. La sœur de la femme. Here's an exercise that you can try right here. And if you go there, it takes you to a little quiz about family members, right? C'est la mère du mari. It's the mother of the husband. So who is the mother of the husband? It's... The mother-in-law, right? So you have to plug in the right uh, um, uh, vocabulary word 
and you have to use the definite article with it uh, as well. Okay, so try that one. And don't forget, you have three uh, exercises to do, video e-workbook quizzes to do this week. You've got exercises 2.1, 2.2, and 2.3 to do and turn in and drop boxes. You have a voice thread activity on uh, the Simpsons family uh, to do right there uh, uh, in D2L. And you have a discussion to participate in on les pastons, pastimes, uh, hobbies. And you have your second version of your composition to turn in this week, so don't forget to listen to my corrections and incorporate them into your second version that you're going to turn in. And at the end of the week, on Saturday, la saint Valentin, uh, Valentine's Day, le samedi 14 février, de 10h à 11h, from 10 to 11, you've got real-time meeting 3 via WebEx. I'll be sending the link out soon. And that's it. Passez une bonne semaine, mes amis. Au revoir.